Hello, you're watching Off New X, where junkie and good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 天才基本法 The Heart of Genius is a 34-episode web drama that's being aired on the platform iQiyi. It is directed by Shen Yan, written by Nie Cheng Shuai, led by Zhang Xincheng, Zhang Zifeng, Lei Jiayin, also featuring Liu Ling, Geng Le, Wang Xiao. And many other actors. The drama was shot last year from July to October, mainly in the city Qingdao, and it is based on a same-titled novel, 天才基本法 written by the author Chang Er. I've watched the first 22 episodes. I decided to make this video not as a first impression, not as a final, but as a warning. <laughs> To people who haven't watched this drama and want to try it out, my suggestion—I'll put it out here and then tell you why—is you can watch the first nine episodes and then quit, with the idea of knowing you don't know what's the ending of this drama, but you're still at a better place. Should you continue from episode nine onwards, pretty much by episode nineteen and twenty. If you have normal sensibility, you probably will get super offended and want to quit. And feeling the last ten episodes you've just spent time watching is kind of wasted, because I'm gonna talk about why it happens like this. It inevitably will have quite a bit spoiler. So if you don't want to get spoiled, quit now. It is based on a novel that was really well written. Although I haven't read, I've heard. A lot of good review on it, but I did spend some time getting to know what is the rough outline of that story and what is the core, what is the main theme and message that the story has. And I would say, in the process of adaptation and turning it into a drama, on the plot level, they've changed over half of the original story. So it's a very different story now if you watch the drama and compare it to the、uh, novel. But the more Important thing is they changed the core. It really is no longer in spirit the original story. I didn't read the novel, so when I started watching this drama in its early stage, the first nine episodes, I enjoyed it a lot. It is only until the second part of the drama, when things start to go out of control, that I was really baffled, and then I start to check out what actually was in the original novel. Then I, I'm like, I so understand now why the original novel fans are so offended by this drama right from the beginning. Okay, but they probably got more offended after the、uh, second stage started. So let's briefly talk about what the story is. And then why? In the drama version, the story starts at our female lead already at the end of university, thinking about whether she should go to work or apply for a totally different degree in master's study. She did philosophy, but she wants to actually do mathematics. Always her passion, but she knows she's not a talented natural mathematician. And her father is, but her father didn't make it. Big in this field, and he ended up being an accountant of a school. Our female lead, played by Zhang Zifeng, runs into a very weird situation. First, a father got into hospital because of an attack that happened in his office. Then she got a photo that is taken when she was young, but not in this world because the event that the photo describes didn't take place. And something happened. She got a time. Parallel universe travel experience, where she ends up in her ten-year-old sort of body in a different universe. So she tries to make what that photo has happen in her new timeline, and thinking that will bring her back to her current timeline. That's the first part of the story. When she did get back into the current timeline, that's the second part of the story. Something happens. She takes the second time travel again into that. Parallel universe, but at a different time. When that parallel universe is her is in high school, and in this adventure, she rediscovers her passion for math. But also, there's that pressure always about getting back to her universe, saving her father because her father got hurt, and her father has Alzheimer early stage. And it also involves the male character who, in the original universe, lost his father when he was young. In the parallel universe, the father was still alive. So that's the drama version. Very different, actually, from the novel version. The novel version only the female lead does this parallel universe jump, and then it's mostly focused on math. At the core, solving problems. At the core, recognizing the difference between genius and normal people, hard work. 
talent. And also, even when you are a genius, you also suffer and have to continuously fight against something that you're born with, all that. The original story is much purer <laughs> in its intention. Very little to do with romantic story or even the whole parallel universe spectacular idea. It's more to do with a person's fight for what they really love and then in the process discovering in a way their own miracles. Now, I've told you the drama is set up. Let's talk about <laughs> why this drama I suggest you only watch the first nine episodes and quit. In the first section of the drama, when our female lead travels back in time and also into a different universe when she was only a primary school student, that part keeps more to the original spirit of the novel, the passion for math, the hard work, fighting for what you believe. And when you want to make it happen, you do it through your own effort. That spirit is in the first section of the story. Plus, the child part is mainly played by the child actors. Wang Shengdi, we've already seen her in Bad Kids, the genius little girl actress. She's growing up, but she's still that good. Then there are two boys, a cute natural curly hair boy called Hua Jiar played by the young actor Fu Bohan. Then the other is the male lead actor in our current universe's child version Pei Zhi, that character played by the young actor Lin Ziye. These three main young actors made this drama worth watching for the first nine episodes. <sighs> so good. Particularly, I think, the surprisingly good is the Hua Jiu actor. Previously, I haven't seen anything with him in it, and he's so young. If nothing goes wrong with his development and growing up, we, we have a big star in the future waiting. Wang Shengdi, as good as she always is, and then uh, Lin Ziye. <laughs> the moment you see this boy, you know he's like leading man material, the type of actor that's all kind of destined for a leading role. And these three kids made this drama. Then plus, in that timeline, you have the more relaxed and funnier Lei Jiaying, who adds quite a lot of comedy in the story. Then you have Wang Xiao, Wang Xiao is one of a kind actor. He's just so good. He can play anything. In this drama, he plays this not really a genius, but work very hard. And then comparing to Lei Jiaying, a genius mathematician, he always feels that level of jealousy, but also just doesn't want to give up. He is the normal people fighting against genius, adult version. If it wasn't for Wang Xiao and the kids, right, the first part of the drama, I wouldn't continue watching. Even when it has Lei Jiaying, Lei Jiaying in this drama just does what he always does. Normal level of acting of Lei Jiaying. It really is the three kids plus Wang Xiao. Oh, I just made the first nine episodes of that summer Olympic mathematic competition camp part of the story, blood boiling, exciting, and good to watch. When they finish the first part of the story and our female lead comes back to her current timeline and universe, first it has to deal with all that kingship story. Then it has to deal with the romantic part of the story where the two leads have this complicated growing up, breaking up, coming back together story. Then it has to do with the space jump, universe jump, parallel universe, almost like a detective story of figuring out how that happens. It starts to have so many centers and scatters. Any older actors just doesn't have that purity and energy of the younger kids version. When they travel for the second time into the high school timeline of the parallel universe, this time it's male lead and female lead. Story starts to go out of whack and off track. In the parallel universe, male lead's father is still alive. His real universe father is dead and he cannot deal with that. He wants to live in the complete family version. So he doesn't want to go back. Whereas our female lead, in her real timeline and space, her father needs to be taken care of because he's got hurt, he's got memory problems, Alzheimer, all that. She wants to travel back. The supposedly lovers, young lovers who've known each other for over 10 years, started to do weird things against each other to get their own goal achieved to the level where it starts to just make you go, what? what? You're making the main lead of a story do such questionable morally, legally things. They make the male lead who traveled to the parallel universe in order to make sure his father doesn't die in this timeline, doesn't continue being a, a traffic police, therefore wouldn't die in an accident. He stole an idea from his original universe because he's a math genius. He knows programming of a game that was popular. 
He wrote the version himself in the parallel universe, became an entrepreneur and got investment from a capital investment company, bought him, make him famous, make that game famous. He earned money that way and made his father quit his job so that he takes care of the company. Therefore, there's no possibility of that happening. And then our female lead comes in and was like, you can't do this. You're doing this so that you can live in this universe, never go back, but I can't. And the story hasn't made it very clear, but it feels like the version where they are tied. So they either both go back to the original universe or they both stay. So the girl is like, okay, you're trying to stop me from making my plan happening to go back to my universe. I just go to your home, steal your source code, leak it online so that making the possibility of your company continuing existing impossible. One is doing plagiarism, crossing different universes, and then disregard the girl who basically told you how to travel to the next universe. And the other is literally doing something illegal, stealing other people's property. And you're lovers, you're actually lovers. And then the guy <laughs> actually reported to police and got the girl into police station. What are you doing? So, so now we turn from a mathematic passion, youthful growing up, love, kingship, romance story to crime story of time, travel, and space jump. And now like, what the heck are you doing? You showed us they really love each other at the beginning. Now when they're in the parallel universe, because they have the different goals of what they want to achieve, they suddenly are at throat with each other. And you're doing it in the in the most unimaginable, <laughs> illegal, and morally questionable way. And it made Zhang Xincheng's character so not lovable. If this is the guy I, I meet in real life and he has a relationship with me in that way and then he did this, I'm gonna run away from this guy as fast as possible like Xiao Feng running away from Li Gozi in Goodbye My Princess. And if anybody living in this world, you come across a boyfriend or girlfriend who would actually do that to you to get what they want. This person is a psycho, like run away from him or her. Absolutely despicable people. When they travel to the parallel universe, the original person in that original body gets pushed back. They take control of their body and absolutely mess up those people's life. And after they leave, all the mess that's left would have to be dealt with the original body. I'm like, what is the morally acceptable reason for writers to screw up characters like that? It's like the only the original universe's things are worth protecting. It does not matter how fucked up the parallel universe gets, as long as our main characters get what they want. What the fuck? It's pretty much the level where you just destroy Daenerys Targaryen in two episodes of a drama that has run eight seasons. Same thing, same thing. It's just like taking less time, you know, like not letting you wait for eight years, but <laughs> everything you've built up for the previous 15 episodes of this drama is like, ah. I feel so sorry for the leading actors who took part in this. So that's my suggestion. Watch the first nine episodes and leave. And if you like Zhang Xincheng and Zhang Zifeng and you want to watch his drama because of that reason, then don't. Watch another thing that's gonna come out later or maybe previously with them in it. Just don't watch his drama. <laughs> Not worth it. Oh, and there's one final thing I want to mention. This drama's director is Shen Yan. He previously directed an epic failure drama in terms of expectation versus reality. What people expected that drama is gonna be and then the performance, which is also a big IP adaptation. Can you guess which one? Tian Sheng Chang Ge. I know a lot of people watching my channel like that drama. I don't, but I understand why you like it. There are good reasons. It's an epic drama. Some of it was beautifully done. But the reality is, number one, that drama performed very badly in the history of the television station that unfortunately spent money buying it. It also was the turning point of most people's opinion about Chen Kun as an actor in China. It also is an adaptation of an IP that changed its spirit. The original story is a purely focused on female lead, her big female role story. And in the adaptation process, they switched it to the male lead, causing endless problems for the storytelling. Should have seen that coming. I didn't notice it was directed by the same guy. No, huh? I've seen the uh, <laughs> another butchering of a pretty good novel. Not only that it lost its original spirit, but it, it, it got to a very weird place. 
So China has its own dumb and dumber. Hey, good to know who that person is. You have the wording. In the future, just look at the director's name of a drama. If you see that guy coming, walk away. So this would be the end of my kind of ranting, but really it's a warning on Heart of Genius. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.